Hello and welcome to Reportage. This is Danish bin Nabi. In today's segment of Reportage, I shall have a discussion about the writings of two famous Sufi saints of Kashmir, Shamas Fakir and Wahab Khar. Their writings have been recently translated by the researcher and author Sultanat Farooq in her recently released book, Kashmiri Sufi Poetry, which has been published by Gulshan Books. We are recording this discussion at Gulshan Bookshop in Srinagar. Sultanat, welcome to Reportage. Sultanat, you have been a researcher. What yeah. inspired you to be an author? Well, the question is a significant one. What inspired me to be a writer? The answer is quite clear. It has been always the company of my father, my mentor, Professor Farooq Fayaz. The gentleman knows no introduction apart from being my father. He's a well-known orator, historian, writer, poet, critic. And uh, having him, obviously, at my home as a father and then as a mentor, seeing him and analyzing his love for books, writing, staying in his company, being in his library, that basically paved a way for me to love books from since my childhood. And then uh, during the course of my life, 9th, 10th, 11th standard, I started to visualize life. I started to be, uh, I can say, more sensitive towards my environments. And that's also a legacy I have carried forward. Uh, and I have got it from my father. He has always told me that a person can be a writer only and only if he is sensitive towards the environment. And when I say sensitive, sensitive does not mean being, uh, I can say, uh, the VP temperament. That's not being sensitive. Sensitive means when you feel someone, when you feel the wine around you, when you feel the pain, when you celebrate the betterment of life. You have to be sensitive. And this temperament I have got from my father. So it has been always a blessing for me that Professor Farooq Fayaz has been my father and I have got this temperament of writing, understanding the environment, putting my thought processes into the words. This is all just uh, come down to me through my father and the inspiration has always been him and that's why I'm treading on the same path. What has uh, Mr. your father, Fa Mr. Professor Farooq Fayaz written about history? He has written so many books. Basically, he is more concerned about the oral tradition of Kashmir. Oral tradition. Oral tradition and folk culture. I, I should basically uh, tell you the fact that he is a man. He has got the folk literature on the platform on the world platform, Kashmiri folk culture. He has written so many books of Kashmir and oral history. He has written folklore. He has written Shekul Alam, uh, Kashmir Revisited. And all these uh, books he has written in that uh, temperament in the folk tradition style because uh, folk is one of the prominent sources of history. And all along his life, he has focused on that thing to bring folk literature, folk as an important part that can contribute towards making the history. Sultanat, why Wahab, why Wahab Khar and Shamas Fakir? What was the need of translating these two Sufi saints, their poetry into English? See, basically, uh, there was also an inspiration why I uh, just uh, wrote on these, or like I translated Shams Fakir and Wahab Khar. The journey basically started from the time when I got my admission in PhD program. I got admission in a Shekhar Alam Center for Multidisciplinary Studies, Kashmir University. And therein, for the first time, I got, uh, I can say, face to face, I got an introduction about myself as a Kashmiri. I thought like that center gave me that impetus to understand myself as a Kashmiri. Because if I would have been there and got admission in some other department, maybe English or somewhere else, I would have worked on Shakespeare, on Milton, on Dunn, and so many sports of people are already working on them. What more contribution I would have been doing in that very field. But when I got admission in this field, I was supposed to work on the Sufi realms of Kashmir or like culture of Kashmir or Sheikh Alam studies. And that uh, was the period when I thought, like, I'm an English uh, scholar. My topic should be like a comparative study between English poets and Kashmiri poets. And after much uh, study, I can say in-depth study, I came to know that Kashmiri mystic, I can say Sufi in um, 
this perspective, Kashmiri Sufi curve reached its climax, the upper part, in the 19th century, and I thought working on these two stalwarts. Uh, Sultanate, I will yes. come to this point, but first explain this to me. Why is it important for authors like you to translate Kashmiri literature into English? By your question, uh, should I take it like why for scholars of English to translate Kashmiri? Translate Kashmiri. Yes. This is a very significant question because this is the time. See, we all are Kashmiris. You are Kashmiri. I am Kashmiri. We have love for our mother tongue. Leave that aside. But let's come over to the rational analysis. The rational analysis says that Kashmiri, irrespective of the fact that we love our language, it's a regional language. We should understand this. This is a regional language. That means when it's a regional language, it's understood and spoken by a, I can say, limited class. So that limited class should not act as a handicap for stalwarts like these to be understood or misunderstood by the people. For me, as an English scholar, I thought like this is my responsibility to get these stalwarts out of this regional language handicap, Kashmiri. And for me to project them on an international platform for via an English language. Audience. Yes. So that people should know. Tell me, for example, if I give you an example of Molana Room, I am not well versed in Persian. I don't know Persian. But if Molana Ram would not have been translated into other the language like English, I would have never come to know about who he was. It's very important. That's why for uh, scholars like me who belong to the other languages, that these uh, stalwarts should uh, be taken from the original class and projected before the world so that the world would come to know who these stalwarts. Otherwise, the literature would remain under the surface. How has this book been taken so far by your readers? Mm. Mm, quite effectively, I should say, because this is a new endeavor in this sort, and especially with the youth. This is a new endeavor. People are so, and especially if I take like in Kashmir at the contemporary times, uh, youth are getting more motivated towards understanding our culture in a better perspective. This generation, uh, as far as I have understood it, and being a part of the youth, I've understood it. Kashmiris, Kashmiri youth are getting more and more influenced and uh, they want to know about their culture and this book through their poetry i am a sort of trying to contribute uh, to that genre and it's being well appreciated and received kashmiri well. youth are getting attracted to kashmiri yes, literature yes when only it's translated in english maybe there's a reason because uh, kashmiri up to this time has been reduced to be uh, as a spoken language uh, we use it at uh, it in our homes only and people th th there's a long way basically uh, we have to shun that mentality like speaking kashmiri outside the home it gives you a sort of people i don't know why because my father writes in kashmiri and i have been given this uh, thing in my legacy that speaking english and speaking kashmiri they should go like uh, hand in hand we are kashmiris and we should be very proud in speaking kashmiri we should be very proud in writing kashmiri do you think we are ashamed of speaking in kashmiri while conversing with each other most probably if i say no that's a lie that's a big lie i don't know whether the fault lies with the parents or it lies with the society. children it lies with the society the standards are being kept if you need to understand that kashmiri is our identity you need to understand this and when this sensibility would drop in the minds of parents first they will start this thing at their homes. But some way our society does not take it on. The, like speaking English is was, uh, considered to be... Uh, or even speaking in Urdu than in Kashmiri language. Yes. I don't know why. So they, we have a concept in English, colonization of minds, colonizing minds. Like, Angriz chale gai, Angriz So Do you think Kashmiris are still suffering this yes. mentality? Yes, yes. I think the whole of the world is suffering from this. Thing. But Kashmiris are more uh, suffering from this yes, type of yes, mentality. Yes, yes, yes. We need to come. This is the time we need to come out of all Sultanat, this. how do you make it sure that you do not lose the essence of the Kashmiri literature, the metaphor, the cultural aspects while translating all these scripts? See the role of the translator because uh, when I started working on these two stalwarts, I basically translated their poetry. So I'm a translator here not the original writer. As a translator, there are some responsibility over the shoulder of the translator. First, you should not uh, lose the original essence of the poetry. But as a translator, I also came to know that when words flow from your pen, something changes. At least the outer apparel, the body remains the same, the outer apparel you change. The message remains the same, but the language changes. But the contribution of the translator should be that the original sense should be kept like that and there 
lies the trick. How? You are not supposed to take the cultural ethos out of the poetry. For example, I give you a reference when I started translating Kashmiri poetry. Up to that mark, I was not able to read the script. Kashmiri script properly. But once I knew that I have to do now this PhD in English and Kashmiri literature, a comparative study, I started uh, uh, working on the script. Was it again your father, Professor yeah. Fayaz Farooq, who helped you out? He helped me out. And apart from, I, I would like to mention two more names, Professor Bashar Bashir Sahab, the then chairman of the center, Sheikh Lalim Center, and uh, Professor Aziz Hashni Sahab, who is no more these two persons also helped me a lot including your yes yes, yes. my father. father has been a mentor all along in my life giving me life lessons but these two persons i should uh, name they helped me a lot but as far as a translator is concerned it's very important for a translator to be well versed with the cultural ethos of the language that he is aiming to translate for example i'll give you a small example uh, if we write in kashmiri we have a word safed posh we use it for a poor person. And that's not to be translated as white flower, right? You have to be well versed with the cultural ethos, the rituals, um, the rites, the metaphors. Basically, you need to have the understanding of the, yes, the metaphors, culture, tradition, the and images, the language. The similes, how the language is portrayed, what are the phrases, the ideology, these things. You can't go on a, I can say, word to word translation. No, the culture, the metaphor, the pulse. Is it important for an, for an author, translator to understand the ethos of a society before you translate any work, any literature work which has been written by all these Sufi saints? Very important. You can't cut the you can't cut the ties of an author from the society. It's very important. I already told you before you put me some another question. It's very important for not a translator. The author. I'm not not asking about the author. I'm asking about, about the, the society. Translator. About the society. Is it important to understand how society at large is for for a very translator? Very important. Very important. Because when you will understand the society, you will understand the ethos of the society, you will understand the culture of the society, you will understand the rituals and the rites. Basically, you need to have an understanding, understanding of that basic. society. You, you need to understand the social fabric of the society. And the social fabric is made of the culture, the people, those people who are living in it, who are making a culture, who are a part of that culture. It's very important for the translator to have. Yeah, because basically, the translator is also the writer. Sultanat, do you believe that women authors are more into translating Kashmiri literature than the uh, men authors? It's a very tricky question. Uh, I feel like uh, author is an author. I, I don't uh, associate like for me. Uh, In respect uh, to of the gender. Really, uh, for example, if you consider, I don't uh, understand this word in the context of being a female author or a male author. I take author as an author respective of the gender. So what is more important for a writer is see writer's profession in a writer's profession. I understand it in a fact that it's never by chance. Take it for granted. A writer becomes a writer by his choice. And when he likes something, you are an author by chance, by choice. Yes, I'm an author by choice. A writer can never be a writer out of chance. No, it's just not you're you are doing some clerical job. I'm not against those things. But uh, but it's uh, writer is always a writer by his choice. And when your choice is to translate something or to produce something in original, you love that thing. So if a woman author loves to translate something, she can translate. And if uh, someone is not in uh, tone with it, not do it. Sultanat, during which era of Kashmir history, Kashmiri Sufi poetry started to take shape in form of writing. See, in form of writing, first of all, I would like to say you that uh, we have the starting from Sheikh Lal. Sheikh Lal, many people uh, contest this thing. That this he was, was not which a century? 14th, 14th? 14th century. 14th century. And uh, he was the younger contemporary of Laldit. We all know that Laldit was uh, superseded him. But the fact is, at that time, um, he used to orally say his shrooks, verses, I can say shrooks, that's the Sheikh poetry, or like Lala's um, poetry is uh, in the form of wax. So that time, it was basically not documented and some after 200 years, uh, Sheikh Lalim's poetry came to be documented. Which means 17th century. Right about, like uh, 16, 16 and a half. But we can't say. When Have you saying, preserved his um, sayings, yes, his the, writings? Yes, those are present now in the Rishi Namas and Noor Namas. Those, those, those writings are there. Why did, we feel, why did we fail at that time to preserve his writings? Because Rather, his sayings. At that time, obviously, maybe the gentleman would have done it himself. Illiteracy was a big factor. Intelligence and literacy are two different things. Intelligence 
does not need to words when you say something you are a kashmiri you can say in any of the languages obviously the language you belong to and the language which belongs to you but to pen it down you have to be literate kashmiri masses were not literate so it time. was only Even after if, 200 years of shekhul yes, yes, alam yes, that yes, we yes, started yes, to yes, 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 yes. properly and, uh, write write all these yes, things this down documentation started taking place but when you say about the general sufi literature because see there are some persons who contest uh, about shekhul alam that he was not a sufi he was a social reformer on a broader perspective sufis are not social reformers sufis are somewhere living in caves writing about god and their uh, journey or like merger between the lower self and the absolute self shekhul alam was a social reformer but if you say about the uh, Sufi literature uh, reaching the climax. It was uh, by the end of it, 18th century and 19th Sultanat, century. Sultanat, I am terribly running out of time. Hence, my last question: How much more needs to be done as far as translating Kashmiri literature is concerned? Oh, Kashmiri literature is a vast sea. I, I need uh, more and more art- authors to come on the front, like uh, you know, from other languages, from English, from Urdu. That they should translate, and then uh, you should know that it's a vast sea. That's uh, Uh, the sea is uh, still under the cover when you will come over to know that uh, it's a literature uh, 700 800 year old literature and if you start uh, translating it it will, it will take much Sultanat, much time sultanat we hope you are able to get more authors on your side thank That you for talking to reportage thank, thank you, thank you. So please subscribe to our channel reportage and press the bell icon to remain updated